Okay, as you've been writing down these acids, you've probably noticed something about them. They're not all the same. I mean, obviously, they have different names, but they're also not all the same. They're not all equivalent. I mean, let's look at some of the possibilities I mean, if I could have for an acid or for a base. I could have the simplest acid. Don't write this down. Hydrochloric acid. You know, very, it's one we've used the most often. But I could also have sulfuric acid, and I could have phosphoric acid. I could have for bases, same basic idea. I could have a very simple NaOH, the most common one we use all the time, but I could also have calcium hydroxide, and I could have aluminum hydroxide. Why do you think these guys are not equivalent to each other? What's the big difference between these? What do you think, Jack? More H's. Yes, these guys have more H's. Some guys have more H's or less. Some guys have more OH's or less. Here's the crazy part about this. As you're going to find when we talk about strength of acids, if I were to ask you right now, so who do you think is the strongest acid? H3PO4, right? No. No, it's not. You would think that, and it makes sense that it should be. It's got three times as much H's as it has this guy. Same thing's true for ALOH3. You might think he would be the strongest. But strength of acid is something different. We'll talk about the acid strength mm, probably next week. But there's clearly a difference between these guys. There's a different number of H's. So a one molar solution of every one of these guys isn't really one molar. All right? One molar solution of HCl has, does, and a one molar solution of h 2 he has twice as many H's as a one molar solution of this guy. And he has three times as many H's. Now, it doesn't make him stronger. But there is some, it does affect his concentration. Okay, there's a difference between strength and concentration, and we'll talk about that all right, as we go on with this. Strength of acid has to do with how well it breaks up its solution. So let's talk about it. And by the way, the reason we have to take care of this is because it's going to, obviously, if I add one molar HCl to, or H2SO4 to uh, one molar of these, one of these other guys over here, I better make sure that they have the same number of H's and OH's, or they're not going to work out the same. It's not going to neutralize each other. All right, so let's talk first about monoprotic acid. Oh, and I should mention, too, at this point, why protic? Why protic? What does the word protic mean? Poly, we all know what mono means one, and poly means many. But why protic? Anybody want to answer that for me? What does a pro, protic probably refer to? A proton. Remember this. Don't write this down either. I should kind of uh, refresh your memory here. Here's my HCl. Here's a Lewis structure of HCl. When H donates, when HCl donates this H to water, guess what he doesn't take with him? His electron. Hydrogen, the atom, looks like this. He's got one electron and he's got one proton. If he leaves that electron behind, if he leaves that electron behind, what am I really donating when that H adds onto here? A proton, a single proton. All right, that's where the monoprotic comes. These guys donate one proton, okay, or one hydrogen ion. A hydrogen ion is a proton. They're the same thing. They're synonyms. A hydrogen ion and a proton are the same thing. And that is what makes something an acid. Guys like this. HCl, HNO3, HClO4, and I chose those four, three for a reason. Notice I'm not looking at how many O's there are. I'm no, I don't care if he's binary or ternary. All I care about is how many H's he has per molecule. That's all that matters for mono or diprotic or whatever. Okay? The polyprotic ones, obviously can donate multiple hydrogen ions per molecule. And I would call guys like sulfuric acid, who could donate two, I would call him diprotic. And guys like phosphoric acid, who could donate three, I would call triprotic. Because they can donate three protons per molecule. All right, now how come I have to worry about this? Well, I already kind of made it clear. We're going to be doing calculations with these. We're going to be mixing them together. We're going to be doing what are called titrations very soon. Matter of fact, 
I think tomorrow we may do our first one in here, in, in lab, first lab, because you have a double tomorrow. So we'll probably do a lab tomorrow. We have two labs to do in this chapter. i got to be sure of the how many H's there are per molecule when I'm doing my calculations, my formulas, and my um, concentrations. So I'm going to come up with a brand new system, a brand new way of getting concentrations. What have we seen for concentrations before? Well, we saw percent solution. But that wasn't very useful for chemistry because it just talked about how many grams of solute per, per grams of solution. So we saw, hey, something way better. Moles, molar, molarity. That was better. All right, moles of solute per liter. But now I just learned that even moles aren't good enough. One molar solution isn't good enough because I can have twice as many H's or three times as many H's. So I have a new thing, and it's called normality. Something this class is sorely lacking. Normality. I know a lot of these words don't seem to make any sense. But normality basically, <laughs> basically, it doesn't have to be a Normality is talking about the equivalency of solutions, okay? It's the number of equivalents of solute per molecule, per, per liter, I should say, of solution. And it takes into account how many equivalents per molecule, how many hydrogens or how many hydroxides there are. This is a really easy calculation, as you'll see. That's why I wanted to get this through. I want to have you do the worksheet first. Have that in. If you have extra time, you can work on the other homework problems that from the stuff I just went over. All right. So the number of equivalents of solute per liter of solution. What's an equivalent? In effect, it is just the number of hydrogens or hydroxide ions per molecule. So you take your molarity, whatever that was, if it was a one mole or a two mole solution. And you can multiply it by the number of H's or OH's, that will tell you the normality. It'll take into account multiple H's or multiple OH's for these guys. Now, to practice this, I just have a chart to do. We're going to fill in a chart. It won't take me very long because you'll see it's extremely easy. So, copy that chart down. And we'll start off with a really easy example. A guy who only has one H per molecule. A guy we've seen a hundred times. Hydrochloric acid. And we'll take a real easy concentration of One more. From one more solution of hydrochloric acid, which by the way, you guys have used several times in labs throughout the year. And you will use again in the uh, titration. If I have a one more solution of hydrochloric acid, what's his normality? Well, you may be surprised to find that its normality, it shouldn't be, is exactly the same. It's 1.0 normal, and here's why. One molar is one normal because how many equivalents are How many H's or OH's are there? One. Only one. So if I multiply one molar times one, I get one. It's that easy. Try this guy. It seems too easy. See if we can find it, get you to make a mistake here. See if we can get you to make a mistake in this one. If I gave you a two molar solution of HNO3, what would his normality be? No. It would still be two. I don't care how many O's there are. I only care how many H's. There's one H. Two times one is two. That's it. So I didn't trick you on that one. That's good. How about this one? That's the base, not an acid, but it's the same basic principle applies. How many OHs per molecule or how many H's per molecule? I've got a three molar solution. How many OHs are there per molecule? Yeah, yeah. so what am I going to get? Six. Everybody good with that? Okay. A couple more and I'll be done. How about this guy? H3PO4 and he's 2.0 molar. Well, he's got three H's. Three times two is six. 
And one last, the last one I'm going to do is going to do it backwards. If I gave you an eight normal solution, can you figure out the molarity? It should be easy, right? I know he's eight normal. I know there are two equivalents per molecule. There's two H's there. So what would the molarity have to be? Everybody see you'd have to divide in this case, right? Because 4 times 2 is 8, right? Or 8 divided by 2 is 4, okay, depending on which way you do it. Pretty simple stuff. Now, how can I make this harder? If you'll notice in the worksheet, the bottom two, I'm not going to do it on the board for you. You're big boys and girls. Guess what I'll do in the bottom two that are kind of word problems? I don't tell you the molarity. I say you have 20 grams of HCl dissolved in this many milliliters of, what will you do? Moles per liter, calculate moles per liter, do the molarity first, and then time to buy the number of things. I only have two of those. The rest of them are just in chart form like the other guys. Okay? Yeah. What's that equation? Well, it's in your notes.